Hello! In this video, I'll be showing you 10 KISS songs that if you are a casual fan, you probably don't know, but you should. And if you're a fan of the band, stick around. There might be some tidbits here that you might want to sink your teeth into. Let's get started. Since Friday, November 18, 1988, I consider that date my kind of second birthday. On that day, I became a KISS fan. Now, when we talk about the music of KISS, specifically the lyrics, one has to realize that you cannot go around comparing them to lyrics from Billy Joel or Rush or something like that. There's not going to be a lot of symbolism or layers to search through. With KISS, what you read is pretty much as deep as those lyrics are going to get. And with this band, you're usually not going to go beyond topics such as sex, love maybe, and definitely a lot of songs about believing in yourself. A lot of people throughout the years have said that KISS has kept up with its own acronym, Keep It Simple and Stupid. I don't really believe that because there needs to be a certain amount of intelligence to be able to make lyrics so simple that a lot of people can relate to them. And besides that, certain members of the band have definitely proven themselves to be uh, very intelligent. Sometimes a little bit too egotistical with their intelligence, but still very smart. And another thing that I've come to realize through the decades is that to be a KISS fan, you pretty much have to have a very well-developed sense of humor because if not, you're probably going to give up on the whole thing. So anyways, let's get started. The first song we're going to look at is a song called Anything For My Baby. That song came out in uh, their third album, 1975's Dress To Kill. If there is one claim to fame on this album is that it has the original version of the song Rock and Roll All Night. Anything For My Baby is a very simple song written by the star child, Paul Stanley, which gets straight to the point. It's about love, not just sex, and the lyrics tell you about a guy who will, well, do anything for his baby, for his girl. Back in those first three albums, Kiss used to play a more basic, some meat and potatoes kind of rock and roll, you know? They weren't trying to be too heavy or heavy metal, which by the way, they have never been. And they were just going to stick to the basics. But you can still find some very cool lines played by Gene Simmons on his bass. Flaming Youth is a song that appears on what perhaps could be called Kiss's most successful album. And that album would be Destroyer, which came out in 1976. This song has writing credits to Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, and guitarist Ace Frehley. Bob Ezrin, the producer in charge of Destroyer, took three different pieces of music by the three members and mashed them up in order for Flaming Youth to be born. This is one of the best tracks on Destroyer. The lyrics are about youth versus authority, the young versus the old. The expression Flaming Youth can be seen as far back as Shakespeare, and in the United States back in the 1920s, it was used to refer to women who started dressing in a more revealing fashion as opposed to what was the norm back in those days. I can wholeheartedly recommend this song for you to listen today, and besides, you're gonna love the guitar riff. The next song we're taking a look at is a song called Take Me, written by Paul Stanley and Sean Delaney, a guy who co-wrote many songs with the band. The song comes off 1976's Rock and Roll Over album. This song is about sex and it really doesn't go much further than that. But the funny thing here is that Paul Stanley still tries to get some romantic stuff in there. When you have kind of crude and crass lines such as sitting in the back, her head down in my lap, he still tries to, you know, shovel in some romantic stuff like the moonlight shining down on her hair. That's as romantic as tying a brick to a bouquet of roses and throwing it through the window of your sweetheart. I mean, it's romantic, sure, but it's not that romantic, really. In any case, the song has a great, absolute, top-of-the-line riff, and I give it a two thumbs up for you to listen to right now. Now is the turn for 1979's Magic Touch. This song is included in the album Dynasty which was mostly famous for having the mega hit song I Was Made For Loving You and showing how Kiss could boogie as well as anyone. More than 40 years after that particular song was released, you can still hear it all over the place. The song Magic Touch was written by Paul Stanley and, once again, don't overthink it. He wrote it about a girl he was dating who kind of seemed to disappear all of a sudden. It ended up being one of the many very short relationships that he ended up having throughout the first 20 years of his career. 
The kind of relationships that only lasted a couple of months, or maybe 20 minutes after a concert, or seven minutes, or three. The fifth song I'll be covering is called Naked City. This is by far one of my favorite songs from the entire KISS catalog. It was released in 1980 on an album called Unmasked, probably the most panned album or second most panned album that KISS has. They say it's too poppy, but once again, truth be told, KISS was never a heavy metal group and it never wanted to be in the style of Iron Maiden or Black Sabbath, much less something like Metallica and not even close to bands like Sepultura or Cannibal Corpse. KISS is just a hard rock band, period. Sometimes harder, sometimes softer. Nevertheless, this song is sung by bassist Gene Simmons and it was written by Simmons album producer Vinny Poncia, who had just produced the band's prior album Dynasty, and Pepe Castro, a musician friend of the band, and perhaps the most important one, Bob Kulik, who brought the original guitar riff to the table. He was the brother of Bruce Kulik, who later ended up becoming Kiss's lead guitar player and stayed there for 11 years until the 1996 Kiss reunion, where the original members came back to the fold. Naked City was based on how Gene Simmons and many people view and call the city of New York. A city that never sleeps, with people passing each other on the street without thinking twice about one another. Maybe it's a more common denominator way of thinking about the city of New York, but still, that is the way that it's represented on the song Naked City. By the way, a funny story. Uh, some years ago, I found this great cover of Naked City by this Scandinavian Kiss tribute band, and they play all the songs, they wear some makeup, etc., but they do it all in, uh, in the style of reggae music. So I put a link to their video of the song on Twitter, mentioning Gene Simmons and telling him to check it out. He did. He liked it so much that he retweeted my tweet. Now that is pretty cool. In 1981, KISS released a greatest hits album called KISS Killers. It wasn't released in the United States, but it was released in Japan and in some countries in Europe. As I said, this album was a greatest hits, but it did include four top-notch new songs, amongst which was this song, Nowhere to Run, sung by Paul Stanley. I consider this another one of Kiss's best songs. He wrote this song based on a girl he had been dating who then broke up with him in order to get back together with her ex. This must have been a pretty heavy punch to Paul Stanley's ego, but in any case, he still ended up writing this song in which he's telling her that she's gonna realize what she's done later on and then she's gonna have nowhere to run. Listen to it. It's a great song with a great acoustic guitar introduction and just, it's, it's out of this world. Listen to it. In 1981, Kiss released another album and this one is called Music from the Elder and this is by far Kiss's most hated album by fans. This album, the brainchild of Gene Simmons, was a concept album, an album whose songs make up one story. Back then, Simmons said that they were trying to make an album akin to Pink Floyd's The Wall. The album's producer was, once again, Bob Ezrin, who had helmed the Destroyer album. But Ezrin himself has said that back then he was doing so much cocaine and drugs in general that the making of the album ended up being a complete disaster. Now, I don't consider Music from the Elder a bad album. It's just a huge departure from anything that Kiss had ever done before or has ever done since. But musically speaking, it is not a bad album. And the biggest miracle of all is that there is not a single song which is about sex. But getting back to the song at hand, in this album, Kiss had a song called A World Without Heroes, which was written by Gene Simmons, and it is one of his best lyrics in his entire career in or outside of Kiss. I actually remember in 1991, I believe, seeing Cher sing a cover of this song. By the way, for those of you that don't know, Cher was in a relationship with Gene Simmons in the late 1970s. In any case, this song is actually very, very cool. And uh, they made a video for it. And in that video, you can actually see something which nobody ever thought that they would actually be able to see. Gene Simmons crying. Another song from the Music from the Elder album 
is the album's closer, a song called I. It was written by Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. And a strange thing about this song, and something which I wish had happened more often, is that both Gene and Paul sing lead, sing in different verses each. This song falls under the Believe in Yourself banner. It's a perfect song to listen to, to sing, whenever things aren't going your way, when you're feeling down and can't seem to find your path in life. Listen to it and get your hopes up. The next song is called Danger. This is a song that was written by Paul Stanley and Adam Mitchell, and it was released in 1982's Creatures of the Night album. This is easily one of Kiss's three heaviest albums, and by the way, it has one of the best drum sounds, which they based off of Led Zeppelin's John Bonham. The album was produced by Michael James Jackson, who sadly passed away recently, and it has a great sound, a very open sound, but not to the point of becoming too boomy. This song is about adrenaline junkies. You know the type. The kind who put half a gallon of adrenaline into their morning shake just before getting on an airplane and then jumping off that airplane without a parachute. But with a snowboard landing on a snowy mountain and then going off a cliff where their wingsuit suddenly opens and they land in a volcano. An active one. The last song in this list of 10 KISS songs which you should definitely know is a song called A Million to One. And it's the only one from KISS's Makeup Less era, which lasted from 1983 until 1995. The song was written by Paul Stanley and Vinnie Vincent, who was KISS's lead guitar player only on this album, 1983's Lick It Up, one of the band's heaviest. He was later let go because, as Gene Simmons put it, he was a very self-destructive kind of a guy. This is another one of my very favorite KISS songs. It's a song about love lost. A heavy love song. So listen to these 10 KISS tracks. Especially if you are not really a fan and you've only ever listened to I Was Made For Loving You or maybe Detroit Rock City or Rock and Roll All Night. And if you are a KISS fan, Take a listen for the upteenth time to these hidden gems inside the KISS catalog. They are so, so worth it. And again, a funny thing, sex is barely mentioned in these songs. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers and I'm only 99,400 short. So anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.